Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm working on our 1948 uh, Chevy 3100 uh, pickup, um, the P48 project. And right now what I'm doing is going through my fuel system components and seeing if I have everything. And it turns out I've got to order a couple uh, remaining bits and pieces for the fuel system. Um, I'm going to be using push lock hose and uh, aluminum AN fittings throughout. Uh, these are, you know, black anodized AN fittings. They're really uh, easily affordable and uh, easy to install. Um, they push on the hose and lock securely and, uh, you know, hold up to, I don't know, several hundred PSI. Um, in addition to the push lock fittings, I'm also going to be, going to be using Oedeker clamps on every one of my connections. Um, just as extra added precaution, extra security since it is the fuel system. Um, so that's how I'm going to do the fuel system. I'm using a Walbro fuel pump, uh, made in USA fuel pump, and uh, using these uh, 10 millimeter adapters to connect to our AN fittings. So everything should be easily serviceable. The fuel pump will be mounted inside the frame rail in a rubber mount um, and all my fuel lines will be clamped in place with stainless clamps. Um, I like to keep all of that stuff nice and tight and tidy. I don't uh, uh, like having lines hanging around where they can get burned and melted on the exhaust system or rip loose if something was to snag them. Uh, so uh, that's how I'm going to be doing the fuel system. I got these awesome adapters from JEGS that connect to the back of the TBI throttle body and uh, have a, a dash 6 AN connection on them for a nice easy to service uh, AN fitting. Uh, considerations I had to make were pretty simple for this truck you know it's not running a big horsepower motor we're not doing any kind of a boost uh, situation so fuel pressure you know, it wasn't a concern, and having adjustable regulator um, other than what's built into the TBI wasn't really a concern. So uh, I had to have enough fuel flow to support a stock Chevy 350 TBI, which is pretty easy. Uh, it needed to be easily serviceable and uh, and reliable, so that hopefully, you know, we don't have any fuel system issues, and uh, the owner of the truck doesn't have to uh, uh, climb under the truck to to change out any lines or leaks. Um, but in the event that he did have a leak or needed to shorten or lengthen something, the push lock hose easily allows you to, to cut it to length, use a hose clamp and a, and, a, and a barbed fitting, and he'd be able to you know, shorten it, lengthen it, fix a hole uh, very easily. So um, that's why I decided to go with as opposed to flexible nylon line or something else uh, or braided line that wouldn't be as easily serviceable if there was a problem. Um, so I've got all my components here. Um, I'm going to be welding these steel bungs in the top of the fuel tank. And these uh, will use a straw pickup, a 3-8 stainless straw that will run down into the bottom of the tank for the pickup. And for the return, it'll just have a smaller piece of stainless tubing that will bend uh, up against the side of the inside of the tank so that the return doesn't... Uh, doesn't flow straight down where the pickup is and uh, emulsify the fuel. And these will be welded into the top of the tank and we'll use a 90 degree AN fitting uh, to connect to our push lock hose. So that's how they're going to mount. Should be a nice, easy, simple fuel system. And when you're ordering these components, you know, you got to think through every connection throughout the system. Um, how you're going to route it, where it's going to go, what it's going to rub against, how close it's going to be to heat sources, um, and how you're going to secure it. So uh, those are all considerations you have to make when you're putting together a fuel system. You know, in addition to the the volume of fuel that you need to flow. If you're building a higher horsepower motor and you have bigger pumps and uh, more filtration than what we have in this system, uh, we're just running a regular can filter. Um, you know, you have some other considerations you have to make, but uh, this P48 is going to be pretty simple power-wise. So 
I'm going to get started mounting that fuel pump into the frame rail. Uh, I'm also going to punch a hole in the firewall and route my wire connections from the uh, all the engine sensors and uh, motors through the firewall and from the computer side uh, I'm going to stagger my connections uh, between those two wires so that I don't have all of my connections bundled in one spot. Because if, uh, if you have all of your solder connections and heat shrunk connections bundled in one place um, you're going to have a, a bundle that's you know an inch in diameter that won't fit through the through the hole in the firewall so I'm going to stagger those connections along a probably a foot or 18 inch span uh, between the ECM or PCM plugs and and uh, the sensors on the other side of the firewall so that it's staggered and my wire harness will be nice and thin um, and will be easy to to pull through the hole in the firewall. I don't want to punch a giant hole in there. I want uh, maybe three quarters inch at the most. I'm hoping maybe five eighths um, and be able to get all my plugs from all the sensors through the hole. Okay guys, so we're back under the truck here and uh, I've been looking at potential locations to mount the fuel pump. Uh, I think I know where I want to put it. So one of the considerations you want to make when you're working with the fuel pump and you're mounting it on the fuel rail is noise. So you can see that I've got this in a rubber isolation boot. So when it's clamped in place, uh, the rubber clamps and the boot around the fuel pump keep the vibrations to a minimum. You also want to spread your clamps out as far as you can get them. I'm spreading these about three inches uh, apart and uh, that should that should keep it nice and quiet um, and keep it from rattling on the fuel rail and driving everybody crazy. So I've marked, uh, I've marked my inlet and my outlet. And uh, I thought I'd take a second and try to explain um, this wiring harness because I know wiring is intimidating to a lot of people and there's a lot of wires and a lot of plugs and a lot of things going on. So I'm going to try to explain as quickly as possible here, uh, as easily as possible, what I've done to our old existing TBI harness and how I'm going to shorten it up and make it fit in the 48 because the 48 is a much smaller vehicle uh, with a much smaller uh, engine compartment. So what I got here is our red and blue plugs. These two plugs are from our ECM or our engine control module. Some people call it PCM which is a powertrain control module. Basically just the engine computer. So there's two harnesses in this vehicle, in the 48. So all of the wiring within the chassis of the truck is going to be on the chassis harness. And then a separate harness, for the only for the engine itself, is the ECM harness, and that's what I'm working on. So the first thing I did is I pulled up the wiring diagram for the 94 uh, Chevy TBI 350 and I took that pinout diagram, and that's basically just a number system from one to, I think, uh, I think there was 50 pins on this ECM. So it's basically just pin one through pin 50 across the ECM, and it tells you what every pin on that computer um, connects to. So then I went through the harness, and I took every single wire, and the wires that we're not going to use, um, all the smog stuff, um, the transmission control uh, wires, all of that stuff that we're not going to use in the P48 project, I bundled separately. And I didn't cut them off yet because, you know, I, I want to make sure not every diagram is 100% is accurate. 
and you never know when you might need one of those wires. So I'm not going to cut any of those off until I have the motor running and I have all of the wiring taken care of in the truck and everything is working properly with no check engine lines. Um, so now the next step is locating the computer. So we have to put the computer somewhere and, and I'm going to mount it up under the dash. So I'm mounting the computer up underneath the dash where it's protected from the elements and it can't be harmed uh, as, as it would if it was in the engine compartment. I'm going to run all the, all the wiring through the firewall right behind the distributor so that everything's clean and hidden for the ECM harness. It's all going to be loomed and really no one will even notice it's there. That's my objective. So these plugs go into our computer end and the other wires, since I had to cut off the old plug that passed these wires through the firewall on the, on the donor truck, um, I cut all of these wires off at that plug because I knew I was going to have to shorten them and lengthen them anyway. So there was no need to, to try and keep that plug and work around it. Um, I just clipped it out of the harness altogether. Um, so now my task is to take and reconnect these wires. So all I really have to do is connect blue to blue, you know, green to green, purple to purple, and they'll be connected to all of the sensors they were connected to originally. So I hope that kind of explains it and makes it a little less daunting. It's really not that big of a task. The hardest part is just shortening up the wires. So since I've cut them basically in the middle of their length, um, I can take out a foot, I can take out 10 inches, I can take out you know, two feet from uh, the sensor side of the wire and um, reconnect it, solder it, put heat shrink on it, good to go. So I'm going to set you guys up in there so you can follow along and uh, I've already started drilling the hole uh, through the firewall and pulled a couple of the wires from the distributor through there already. I'm going to unplug the distributor yank it out of the motor so that I have more room to work right there and uh, and get all of these wires passed through. doesn't look quite so bad after you tape it up a little bit, huh? Well guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for me today. I'm still waiting on the big brown truck to bring me some uh, fuel system parts and uh, some more wiring components so I can uh, build those battery cables and um, get uh, get some more progress done here on the, on the wiring. Um, I did get our bitchin' Prothane urethane transmission mount, so I'm going to throw that in there and run my bolts up into the cross member uh, into the frame so I can get my uh, C clamps out from under there and have that permanently mounted. So I'm going to get that done you guys uh, thanks for watching and uh, please click like and subscribe uh, if you like this kind of content.